They're coming to get you, Barbara. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most annoying characters in horror films. You get back here! You rest tanks! That tree is, is tied to all of our dead. It's a dead tree, though. It's dead. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's important to us. I just had to pee. I didn't know it was special. This list, we'll be looking at the most obnoxious, irritating, or hated characters from horror movies. Who is your least favorite horror movie character? Let us know in the comments and be nice ish. Let's roll. Number 10 Paxton, Josh, and Oli. Hostel. Hey, the party has arrived. You are safe from Porto. While traveling through Europe, American tourists Paxton and Josh meet up with an Icelandic traveler named Oli. After watching them for a few minutes, you probably wouldn't want these idiots touring your country. All three are self-absorbed and inconsiderate dudes whose goals mainly seem to revolve around hooking up with women. Oli proudly presents Isabella. She's cute. Paxton's sense of entitlement and arrogance makes him embody the stereotype of the obnoxious American tourist. He also inappropriately makes light of several very serious issues. Director Eli Roth, who also made Cabin Fever, has a knack for creating loud, dumb, and ignorant characters. Number 9. Franklin Frankie Cheeks. Final Destination 3. Guess who's back? <sighs> This wannabe ladies' man hits on two high school students at an amusement park a couple of years after he already graduated. Get out, Frankie. Yeah, why are you even here? Yeah, you graduated like two years ago. I stuck around to monitor your development. To make matters worse, Frankie uses a video camera to get an uncomfortably up-close and personal look at these girls. His attempts to flirt with them are also extremely cringeworthy. Even when the girls show they're clearly not interested in him, Frankie refuses to leave them alone. He even tries to flirt at a funeral. Don't be down, Frankie. Be proud of your ability to make everything that happens somehow a story about you. Maybe he was always intended to be an annoying comic relief character that is ultimately disposable. Unfortunately, he's so bad that he drags the movie down with his cringy behavior. Number 8. Judy. Sleepaway Camp. Wait till you get a load of Judy. Man, oh man. When Angela goes away to summer camp, she has to deal with an obnoxious girl named Judy. This horrible stuck-up camper is consistently mean and seems to delight in messing with the minds of the people around her. Judy especially likes to target the film's protagonist. When the vicious camper wasn't hurling insults, she was trying to steal Angela's love interest, Paul. Well, well. If it isn't the two lovebirds. Why don't you get out of here? Oh, sorry. And for some reason, the caddy camper had a weird fixation about Angela not swimming or taking a shower at the same time as everyone else. Give it a rest already, Judy. Weirdo. Hey, Angela. How come you never take showers when the rest of us do? Huh? Number seven, Freddie Harris, Halloween Resurrection. Let's the danger tainment begin out there. Did this movie really need Busta Rhymes? That's what I'm looking for. After we felt the sting of losing Lori early in the film, we're left with characters like this self-promoting reality show producer. The worst thing about Freddy isn't that he's shameless or cocky, it's that the movie largely lets him get away with it. He even makes a mockery out of a horror legend by trying to fight Michael Myers with karate moves. Let's see what you got. But Freddy's biggest crime was that obnoxious trick-or-treat line that was just begging to be awkwardly crammed into promotional trailers for the movie. The dialogue was as contrived, lazy, and unimaginative as the character himself. How am I feeling now? Want to know how I'm feeling right now? Feel this. <laughs> Number 6. Michael Myers as a Child. Halloween. To differentiate the 1978 John Carpenter classic from his remake, director Rob Zombie decided to explore what Michael Myers was like as a child. But we think this was a mistake. I'm not listening! Watching Michael deal with family drama and other students at school took away all the mystique. Shut up! Shut up! 
when he's screaming at his sister or swearing at authority figures as a kid, it detracts from his sinister presence as an adult later in the film. After watching him lash out as a child, it's clear that it was for the best that we never heard Michael Myers speak in the original film. You are starting to annoy me, boy. I hate you. And I hate you, too. Number five, Barbara, Night of the Living Dead. You're still afraid. Stop it now, I mean it. Barbara might be the last person you want as an ally if you find yourself holed up in a farmhouse during a zombie apocalypse. She's an absolute coward who was basically useless for the majority of the crisis. When Barbara finds herself boarded up in a farmhouse with a group of survivors, she spends most of this time either checked out, whining, or in complete hysterics. And he grabbed me! He grabbed me! And he ripped at me! He held me and he ripped at my clothes! I think you should just calm down. We get that all she wants is to be reunited with the brother she was separated from at the beginning of the film, but bringing up the idea of going to look for him multiple times gets annoying fast. Sorry, Barbara, but Johnny's a goner. Don't you understand? My brother is alone! Your brother is dead. No! Number 4. Samuel Vanek, The Babadook In this horror film, Amelia tries to get over the death of her husband while raising her son, Samuel. Unfortunately for Amelia, the kid is a lot to handle for a single parent. Samuel is an absolute little terror that likes to scream in the backseat of a car and throw firecrackers around indoors. Because of Samuel's constant need for attention and care, Amelia can barely find a minute's peace. He's just really tired. If anything, Noah Weissman, the child actor who played Samuel, might have done too good a job portraying this rambunctious kid. Number 3. Heather, Mike, and Josh, The Blair Witch Project For much of the movie, this trio of filmmakers get on each other's nerve constantly bickering as they get more and more lost in the woods. Why is it not, not possible? possible? Because oh, this is America and it's not possible. We've destroyed America, most of our natural resources. Let's just keep going. America. God show your grace on me! Heather is arguably the worst of the bunch, a control freak who doesn't have the good sense to put down the camera even when their lives are on the line. <laughs> But Mike is a strong candidate, too, for making the insanely stupid decision to throw away a map without telling the others. Why did he do this? Because he decided on his own it wasn't helping the group. And he's a moron. Okay, no, I'm not. Your, I'm not. Your own map not, was not useless. Not this was your own map. That map was useless. You. Number two, Mrs. Carmody, The Mist. Mrs. Carmody is a self-righteous and condescending religious fanatic who weaponizes her faith to insult and critique everyone who disagrees with her. I tell you what, the day I need a friend like you, I'll just have myself a little squat and shit one out. When monsters roam the land and mist covers the sky, Mrs. Carmody takes over a grocery store that she and other shoppers find themselves stuck in and starts a doomsday cult. Thinking God would reward her for her faith, she starts sacrificing people to the monsters. Mrs. Carmody even goes as far as to suggest a child should be given to the beasts. She whips up the crowd by appealing directly to their worst instincts. People like Mrs. Carmody are the reason why we can't have nice things. Haven't I proven myself? Again and again and again. Haven't I shown that I am his vessel? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few other annoyingly dishonorable mentions. Private William L. Hudson, Aliens. Does he ever shut up? <laughs> Bob Boyle. The House by the Cemetery. Horrendous dubbing made a bad character worse. I saw her face. She was waving. I could read her mouth. And did she say anything to you? 
Yep, she said that I shouldn't go over there. Why did she say that, Mommy? All the main characters, unfriended. With friends like these, well, you know the rest. I Put down a finger do and we'll see. She already said it. Stop pushing Yeah, I heard her say that. She always tells the truth, Mitch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she does. She always tells the truth, right? Melissa Ashley Emerson Power. Friday the 13th, Part 7. The New Blood. Spoiled and obnoxious. Hey, Tina. Isn't this the way the weather jack is back in the mental hospital? <laughs> Shelly. Friday the 13th, Part 3. This prankster really got on our nerves. <laughs> That'll teach you a valuable lesson. A beautiful girl like you should never go out in the dark alone. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Franklin Hardesty, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre You'd think the psychopathic villains in The Texas Chainsaw Massacre would be the most unlikable characters in the film, but Franklin goes out of his way to be an unsympathetic figure. He's constantly in a bad mood, always complaining, and with nothing positive to say. When did you have it last? Well, I didn't have it last. You had it last. I gave it to you, remember? What'd you do with it? Well, I don't know. Didn't I give it back to you? No, I didn't have it when I got out of the van. You just never gave it back to me. While riding along with his sister Sally and her friends, he thought it was appropriate small talk to bring up how cows are turned into food in gruesome detail. Well, they don't do it like that anymore. Now they got this big air gun that shoots a bolt into their skull and then retracts it. Although Franklin's friends put up with him, they're understandably annoyed about how he obsesses over the smallest things. He's even obnoxious when there's no one around to hear his complaints. To be frank, Franklin sucks. <laughs> Come on, Franklin. It's going to be a fun trip. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.